And the part of the There. Bacteria and archaea. That's, That's one part of species and diversity. This is what we're doing today. Giselle, you have the floor. Oh my god. god. Oh my god, it's a bacteria, bacteria and archaea. Yes. So why is a group of cells, cells that do not have a nucleus? That is what bacteria is described as. Archaea are more closely related to eukaryotes, but they live in extreme habitats. So, so bacteria don't look like this. You have the PLI, uh, which uh, help move transfer like information and stuff between each other. But jellyomes help them move. You have a chromosomal DNA, DNA got ribosomes. It's the only DNA, DNA and ribosomes in the cytochrome. Um, the cell, cell membrane, the cell wall, and, and the capsule, which is like a circling. circling. This, this particular, particular bacteria is, is the best because it's frog shaped. So, oh, oh shit. shit. Oh, oh, sorry, oh, sorry for cursing in the video if, if this is recording. So See you guys. Bacteria and archaea. And this is how they reproduce. They reproduce via binary fission. So the DNA is replicated. And then the cell, a wall, is split down the middle. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's binary fission. You get a septum. That's what this is called. And then it splits into two daughter cells. So, yeah. Uh, bacteria and archaea, they transfer genes through conjugation. But that's just one way they transfer genes. So, so three mechanisms, mechanisms is transformation, where it takes up free DNA, DNA that's, that's in this environment. environment. You have yeah, transduction that picks it up from one host, passes along to the next, next host. This specifically, you can see, this is like a viral DNA, and it's getting, getting injected, injected into the bacteria, bacteria and then it's, it's transforming the bacteria, bacteria that's inside the, the, I mean, the DNA, DNA that's inside the bacteria. bacteria. They have conjugation, conjugation as I mentioned, mentioned before. It's, it's where, where the bacteria, bacteria is being shared between two. Um, the bacteria. The, the DNA, DNA is being shared between two bacteria. So yeah, yeah one cell donates a small circle of DNA. DNA. So well, that's, that's just a little plasmid, and, and then it's going to give it to the other one. Mm. Okay, you have autotrophs. So autotrophs make their own food. You have heterotrophs, which cannot use inorganic sources of carbon, so they have to consume it. So... They, they obtain, obtain carbon, carbon by taking up organic molecules from the environment. environment. And then you have yeah, decomposers, which break down organic molecules into inorganic ones. So, you have yeah, chemotrophs, they use chemicals. chemicals. And you have uh, chemoheterotrophs, that uh, use chemicals. Also, the chemoautotrophs make their own. Chemoheterotrophs, like, consume. Uh, then you have light. Ones with photoautotrophs, they make their own like light source. Well, not well, they get energy from like the light and stuff. Then heterotrophs, where they consume it from other animals. So yeah, on their carbon source. This one is a little bit confusing, but take some time to learn it because honestly, there was a question on the last exam about this. Ah, photo light, and then chemical, uh, and then if you have to get your chemicals from. Eating stuff, then you're hetero. But if you get like from the environment, you're auto. Mm -hmm. So just remember, remember that. that. So, so now you have domain arc, domain archaea. Oh hi, so uh, Howard. So drive in hostile environments. Three or fowls is the most common. They live in very hot places. Um, extreme hollow fowls are gonna live in very in highly sheltered places. This is gonna be like the Dead Sea right here. Nothing lives there, but like you can see that. How low files are going to be able to live there because it's like really uh, highly concentrated with salt. The enemy of the data jet. Which are chemical autotrophs that produce methane. So, examples sewage, marshes, and animal guts. This is where we'll find the data jets and animal guts. Because they have the cows. That cows. So, the main bacteria. There's some cyanobacteria, which is, they carry out nitrogen fixation, uh, which is the incorporation of nitrogen from the air into the ammonia. Nitrogen. So this is critical because eukaryotes need nitrogen for biological processes. Um, so I think it's only like, I think one, it's either one or eight percent of bacteria that can be like fatal, like be pathogens and stuff. Most bacteria is good for you. Yeah. But then you have these bacteria that will cause these uh, diseases. There's like a uh, lot, but you just end up in contact with them. 
Some of them are the common STIs that we know. Others are like you'll see in your lifetime, like strep, and hopefully you don't see botulism. But yeah, whooping cough that could happen with children. So yeah, some can cause disease. So some specifically like E. coli and Agrobacterium are going to be used in biotech. Now we go on to protists. So the protists are like. They're eukaryotes, eukaryotes, but but they also have, like, single cells cells and stuff, so they they are like eukaryotes, but they don't, like, totally fit into what a eukaryote is. is. So, some protists are colonial organisms that that live live together, together, and they they behave in an integrated pattern, pattern, but they're they're self-sufficient. And this is contrary to what a eukaryote is, because usually eukaryotes are, like, multicellular, but, um, and they rely on one another. And that difference, that's what makes protists unique, because they can be, like, Single cells and others can, like, either live together and then, like, be self-sufficient in living together. Usually they'll help each other if they're living together, but protists will just live together just for the sake of doing so. So, you have protists. This is flagellated protozoans. So, there's single unwalled, unwalled cells that have one or more flagella. Eulinoids have a single long flagella. You're going to see it right here. here. Come on out. Uh, and you'll just collect water in their contractile vacuoles, vacuoles, and the organelle contracts and expels water. So you're going to see them with water contracting and expelling water. All those bubbles and stuff. That's how you know. Uh, foraminiferans, like plankton, um, there are single cell predators this, that secrete a that secrete a shell containing calcium, calcium carbonate. They mostly live on the sea floor where they hunt for prey. And some marine plankton, a uh, collection of tiny organisms that drift um, or swim in the open sea. So they live on the sea floor. So just think of plankton when you think of foraminiferans. And I also like the name for Lab. Yeah. Shell lab. Yeah, in lab, uh, there was like... The shell. They had shells. And the, the, the shell is calcium. Which is confusing yeah. with diatoms. They're silicious, yeah. so. Well, well diatoms, diatoms are, are coming, coming up. up. They're, They're not, not the same as. Much. Like, no, um, diatoms, diatoms have a cell of cilia, yeah, not calcium carbonate. I think oh, a lot of people got mixed up on the lab exam with carbonate. Yeah, yeah, that's what. I mean, when I took it out, I was just guessing. I, I put chitin, and that's not correct. That's found in bugs. Anyways, um, ciliates. So the ciliates are unwalled cells, cells with many cilia. So yeah, yeah, I see that. And cilia. if you look back at uh, chapter four, cilia, tiny hairs for movement. Yeah, yeah tiny, tiny hairs for, for, for moving. So you can kind of see it on the edge of this cell so right here. So, so most are predators in the sea or fresh water. They feed on bacteria, algae, and each other. Remember, remember their cannibals? Uh-huh. Ciliates. What was one of the questions on the test? Uh, they, they feed up on each other. other. Okay, okay, paramecium are freshwater ciliates. On the land, Tidum coli is a human pathogen that causes nausea and diarrhea, and that's a ciliate. So if you end up swallowing like lake water and shit, um, this that's why it's not. Uh, that's another reason why it's not good to like um, why you can drink like seawater and shit. Not just because it's highly concentrated with salt, and you're gonna mess up with your blood cells and stuff. It's also because um, oh, what's it? This is fresh water. Yeah, so like, this is like a lake. Diary. No, it says predators in sea or fresh water. Mm. So that's like another reason oh, why it's not Oh, that's paramecium. That's what fresh water. Oh, paramecium. Yeah, yeah paramecium. Yeah. Which is yeah. fresh, uh, this is freshwater ciliates, but you could also have ciliates that live in the sea. So yeah. Now we have dinoflagellates are pretty fun uh, because you can see them like in the ocean. Uh, uh, professor, professor Kim talked, talked about in 2020, 2020 where there was a phenomenon during the summertime, where because, because there were so many people who were not outside, outside and everything, you had a lot of bioluminescence that was happening near the ocean, ocean. and that was because of these dinoflagellates. So, so some, some live in corals that help provide them with sugar, they're a common source of bioluminescence, as you mentioned, but it can also be bad because they can cause algal bloom, which is deadly, anti Aerobic, aerobic bacteria, bacteria can feed on dinoflagellates, dinoflagellates and use up all the oxygen, and then that can deplete the oxygen 
in the area in which uh, other aquatic animals live, and they can uh, suffocate these animals. Uh, also, they are kind of toxic to human beings. It's like not all types, of course, because you can get away with bathing in the water with these and not get sick, but that's not like a for sure thing. Like you can definitely get sick, but it's not like you will, you know. So it just depends on which kind you're bathing with. So yeah. All right, okay, so, so now, now we, we move on, on to, to AP, AP, uh, AP, AP complex sands. So, so yeah, AP complex sands are parasitic proteins that enter and live inside the cell host. host. This is an example with malaria. So malaria causes like a 24-hour fever. There's a lot of parasites that get injected into your bloodstream. And because of that, it can cause death. So you can see the mosquito right here is a vector for carrying this um this plasmodium right here. Another example of an amplicomplexin is going to be toxoplasma, and usually you're going to get that in cats. Um, and uh, it can also cause cysts if you're around um, cats a lot and stuff, and you end up... That's why it's, it's important to wash your hands when you're around. But um, it can impair your immune system. It can also cause birth defects in one's pregnant woman. That's why they suggest that the women who are pregnant don't... Uh, Clean the cat litter in their uh, bathrooms if they have cats. So just be careful with how you interact with amplate and complexes. They can cause quite a bit of problems. All right. Water molds are just water molds. So they're heterotrophic proteins that form a mesh of nutrient filling, um, uh, nutrient absorbing filaments. So you can see that right here. That is a water mold uh, grown on a, it looks like an agar plate. So yeah. Uh, protists are diatoms. So diatoms are made of cilia. So you know that forever, right? Yes. Okay. So they float near the surface of seas or lakes, but some live in moist soil or droplets of water. They can contain oil that helps them stay afloat. The diatom oil can be used to make gasoline. So that's pretty cool. And then you can find these diatoms in diatomaceous earth, which is used as a filter, cleaner, or insecticides. You can also use them on plants and such. Help them grow. There's a lot of nice wide range uses for diet. So they're pretty cool. And they also have a nice structure that's aesthetically pleasing to look at. Now we'll move on to algae. So you have algae that lives in lakes and in uh, other uh, freshwater areas or dam surfaces. You have brown algae, which is multi celled photosynthetic. It's right here, protists with brown accessory pigments. So mainly it's just brown. That's its distinctive property. You got red alley, which is a uh, single cell by contrast. Brown algae is the only one that's multi cell. But red algae is single cell. But most are multi cell forms that live in tropical areas. Why are algae protists and not plants? Because Professor Kim said so. You tell, tell me why algae are protists and not plants. Or is this a question that you don't know the answer to? I don't really know the answer to it either. Can you, can you hear me? Well, I shall continue if there are no responses. Yeah, I can so hear you. now we're going green algae. I was just busy typing. Huh? Hello? I was just busy typing. Oh, okay, cool. Green algae, which is single-cell, colonial, and multi-cell species that live mostly in freshwater, but some are marine, they grow in soil, and they damp surface. So what a distinctive factor for green algae would be that they live in multiple places rather than just um, the one place like red algae. So yeah, just know the distinctive, uh, what, what makes them stand out between each other. Quick note for algae. Um... They're not, I, think I think they're not plants, plants because they don't have certain things that classify them as a, as a plant. Exactly. So grouped up with like, you know, the protist category. Yeah, that's oh, right. Because the they rejects. don't have like vascular, you know, membranes and stuff. All the things that we'll discover about plants coming soon. Uh, you got protists, which are amoebas. Amoebas are bad. They're not that great, really. They're... Solitary heterotrophic protists that feed and move by extending large pseudopods. They can cause disease and contaminate the water. So it's not very cool. Slime molds, a pretty cool one. They're plas 
mobile slime molds that are heterotrophic and they move and feed as a multi nucleid mass form a fruiting body when conditions are favorable. So then you have cellular slime mold, which is a heterotrophic protist that usually live as single celled instead. Plasmodial is going to be multi nucleid mass. It's going to be like a whole thing. But cellular slime mold is going to be more like a single celled amoeba like predator. And when conditions are favorable, unfavorable, the cells aggregate into a cohesive group, forming a fruiting body. Both of those are going to be are going to form a fruiting body, but cellular is going to be single cell. Plasmodial is going to be multi-nucleated. Nucleated. So those are your two differential points when discussing slime molds. Now you have channel flagellates, so they're closely related to animals. Is probably the most the quality that stands out. They're heterotrophic protists with a collar flagellum. So there is a collar flagellum. You can kind of see it right here. They look like little dancing people. That's how I like to distinguish them if I see a photo. Pretty cool. We move on to foot guy. Foot guy have cell uh, wall cells. They spend their lives in a fixed place. Produce haploid spores by meiosis. Fungi grow as mycelium, which is a network of mice grown microscopic interwoven filaments, hypha. Yeah. Hyphae, which is like the strands and like multiple hypha, uh, are strands of walled cells arranged from end to end. And the fungal cell walls consist primarily of chitin. Like if you step on some mushrooms, they're going to crunch under your feet because that chitin. You know what I'm hoping? That... Hmm? You know what I'm hoping? Yeah? That it's two questions per slide. I mean, not slide. I mean, per lesson and not two questions per chapter because this would have like 14 questions. Uh, let's hope not. Uh, this is like two questions. questions. 29, so it's, it's like, like an, an amalgamation. amalgamation. I, I guess. guess. She's, She's not, not gonna... gonna 20 through to 29 is its own distinctive thing, I think. Three, I think. Mm. So I don't think she's gonna go like 23, 24, 25, so on and so forth. It's just gonna be within that range. Those I think she'll classes. just put two, three questions for this one. I mean, yeah, most likely. But I don't think she's gonna do like freaking 15 or something from just this chapter. I mean, I think it, is be, I mean it is seven chapters. It is seven chapters, so I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I that's, that's true, true but, but even so, so she, yeah. it's, it's still, still a 50, 50 question test, and so we'll, we'll see when we get, get there. Honestly, yeah, I don't have time to worry about it. Anyway, <laughs> um, many <laughs> types of fungi, chitrus, group of modern fungi, primarily aquatic, and they produce flagellated spores. That was the so, answer. I believe this chitrus was on the test. Yeah, and we, so. we, what's it called? Like, you went through that like so fast last time, and. I, yeah, yeah, that's true. We had to speed run because there was a lot of information. But now, now we're kind of chilling because it's Tuesday. It's not Thursday, so we have a little time. Yeah. So, so zygote fungus, fungus that usually grows mold. So sexual reproduction yields a thick walled zygospore. And you have sac fungus, which produces spores by meiosis. In sac like cells, club fungus, meiosis, and club same cells. That's how you're going to know the difference. When you look at the fungi, the fungi life cycle goes back and forth. So you have the dicaryotic with N for two nuclei. That's the most distinctive part of the life cycle of club fungi. So the mushroom uh, is that their nuclei is going to form to make a dicaryote. So the mitotic cell divisions form a mycelium that produces the mushroom. This is all that mycelium. The spore making cells form at the edges of the mushroom scales. So it's going to be right here. The inside these dichiriotic cells, nuclei fuse making a diploid. So the fusion turns into a diploid. Then it's going to undergo meiosis to become a haploid spore. Uh, spore. And the spores are released to give rise to a new haploid mycelia. So the release of spores and then. Oop, it's going to go into the ground, all that mycelium is going to collect, and then the function will, uh, the cycle will repeat itself again. Yeah. Let's see the many jobs of fungi. So some of them are decomposers. They break down dead material, as we've seen in nature. 
Some of them grow on some plants and may deplete plants of nutrients. Some of them are harmful for organisms, like an infection in bats. I think there's another one that infects, like, I think it's ants or whatever, and makes them, like, make more fungi, which is really weird. But that's just that's a way that they can be parasitic. Mutualism, so they can aid in digestion of cellulose and grazing as an animal. They can also help plants instead of being parasites. Like, like, for example, example there's a specific flower that I studied, and it has a specific fungi, fungi that also helps it dry, and that fungi, fungi can only be found in the place in which it grows. So that, that is an example of mutualism. Fruit preparation. preparation. In breads, drinks, cheeses, they all utilize fungal fermentation in order to make specific types of products. Many have medications. Penicillin, sap fungal mold. So remember, oh, remember penicillin, penicillin is from a mold. Yum. So <laughs> fungal <laughs> drugs can lower blood pressure, reduce cholesterol, and prevent, most importantly, transplant rejection, which is pretty important when it comes to uh, uh, transplants of organs and stuff. Plants. Let's go into plants. So plants are land-dwelling, multicellulated, photosynthetic eukaryotes. They evolve from freshwater algae, which is a protist due to increasingly dry environment. Plants have multicellulated embryos that form, develop, and are nourished by a parent plant. Um, and they have alternation generations in which they go back and forth between gametophyte and sporophyte. Oh. Look at the life cycle of plants. What? Can you say something? Uh, I remember this. Yeah, plants. Oh, we got the diploid generation. Diploid generation called sporophyte, which produces spores by meiosis. This is your sporophyte. This is a spore it's going to release. That spore is become, going to become a gamete, so like the gametophyte. It's going to undergo mitosis, and then once it's fertilized, it's going to become a cycle. And that cycle turns into your sporophyte. And that's the cycle spore- goes back and forth, back and forth. I think the sporophyte then, is the plant itself, and the gametophyte is the egg sperm stuff. Yep, exactly. You are on point. You got the sporophyte being the plant itself, and the gametophyte being its egg sperm. So that's gametes. Yeah. So this picture um, depicts, uh, like, if you see it in nature and stuff, you see your roots, ry- rhizoids that are in the ground. You see the actual gametophyte, and this is its spore. Pretty, pretty interesting. Mm. Now you got plant structure. So you have the stoma, the cuticle of the plant, the xylem, and the phloem, which is a vascular bundle. Uh, so you have the cuticle secreting cover at the body surface. This is going to prevent the plant uh, from releasing too much water. When, it, uh, when there is particularly dry weather. The stomata also helps in this. It's going to adjust the pores due to how the uh, weather conditions are. So if it's too dry, those pores are going to close to conserve water. If it's too wet, they're going to be uh, open to release. The xylem is vascular tissue that distributes water throughout the plant, like veins. Phloem is vascular tissue that, di- that dissolves the di- distributes and dissolves sugars. So they're right next to each other, pretty close. And the ligands are the stiffy walls of the xylem. So uh, there's a uh, ligand, stiffy walls of xylem. Is there a xylem? So what are the four major groups of plants? We know that we have non-vascular, land plants. That's going to be your basis, like moss. Seedless vascular is going to be something like fern. And we have gymnosperms, our conifers, like pine trees. And then you're going to have angiosperms, which are fruit producing plants. They have fruits and seeds. Non vascular plants, let's go into it moss, liverworts, and hornets. So remember the plant lineage that does not have vascular tissue. When you touch moss, there is no vascular tissue. So just remember that. The leafy green, green part of moss is the half or gametophyte, and the thread like structures are called rhizoids, which hold gametophytes in place. So, so the diploid sporophyte has a stalk that's not photosynthetic. The haploid spores are released and they drift into the wind. The spores germinate and develop into male and female gametophytes. 
uh, the sperm, they swim to the eggs, and fertilization occurs in the egg chamber. This zygote is going to grow and develop into a sporophyte, which remains attached to and nourished by its female parent. So that's why you see stuff like moss is like in one area, it's like specifically attached. But moss, liverworts, and hornworts. So let's so move on to seedless vascular plants. So, so these, these ones don't have seeds, and these ones don't have seeds, but these ones are particularly non-vascular. These ones are vascular, which means they're able to trans, um, distribute nutrients throughout the plant body. You have seedless vascular plants with ferns, horse tails, and club mosses. It's a different type of moss, not regular moss, but club mosses. They possess flagellated sperm and require a film of water to swim to eggs. They release spores, and many ferns are epiphytes because they attach trunks and other branches of other plants. So, like, if you see, like, a tree, and then, like, ferns next to the tree. Gymnosperms are seed plants. So, they're going to have their seeds produced, like, here is your pine cone seed, uh, on the surface of ovules. This is a conifer, woody gymnosperm, with needle-like leaves, and deducious plants that shred all its leaves in the wintertime. For example, ginkgos, cycads, uh, cycads, and they have nettophytes. Those are just common examples of gymnosperm. The most common one that we know is going to be conifer. You got gymnosperms. This is going to be a uh, Part of their life cycle, they evolve from a lineage of seedless vascular plants, of course. One plant comes after the next. Gandalfites are a seed of plants that develop within the projection of spore forming chambers on a sporophyte. So here we go. And the seed plants can undergo a secondary growth and produce wood, which is ligand reinforced. So that ligand is going to become a tree. Angiosperms are flower producing plants. So, angiosperms are vascular seed plants and the only plants that make flowers and fruits. Nobody else makes flowers and fruits. Gymnosperms only make those cool seed plants. That's it. But angiosperms are going to make the fruits that we like to eat and they're going to have flowers. Flower is a special type of reproductive shoot, they have sepals. At the base of the flower, stamens are the flower's pollen producing parts. So it's going to be right here with your anther and your filament. And then carpels capture the pollen and produce eggs. And they have a sticky stigma. This is the entire carpel. This is the sticky stigma attached to the style. And this is the ovary. The ovary has the ovule inside. This is filaments. This is a tall stalk with an anther that holds the two pollen sacs on the stem, the stamen, and that's what we talked about just now. It's gonna hold that capsule of like pollen, pollen with the anther. And then fruit is the mature ovary tissue that encloses a seed or seeds. So yeah, like if you have an apple, that's the fruit, mature ovary tissue, and that apple is gonna have seeds inside. All right, so now we have angiosperm groups. So you have monocots and eudocots. So they have specific differences in terms of how they depict themselves phonetically. So lots of different shapes, different types of flowers. But you can go more in depth in your personal study time. Now we finally get into animals. What is animal? Multicellular consumers that take food into their body where they digest and absorb and release nutrients. They can be invertebrates with no backbone like worms or vertebrates with backbones like us. The colony, colonial theory of animal origin tells us that animals evolved from a heterotrophic protist that form colonies. Alrighty, so we have the sea bear. Is that what that's called? Water bears. Water bear, yeah, water bear. So, so no fossil evidence of early animals, animals because they, they were most likely microscopic, like this sea bear, water bear, water bears. and probably did not contain hard structures to fossilize. So something like this is not going to be able to, uh, like, it's going to decompose pretty quickly when it dies. It's the best so animal not going to have any kind of structure. Pardon? This is the 
best animal out there. It has nuclear resistance, heat resistance, cold resistance. It can survive in space. Dang. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. true. They, they send water, water bears to space. space. They're, They're so cute, cute like, like Loki. If you like, like wait, they're kind of adorable. Know. Anyways. So, so evolution trend of cells. cells. You have so colonial protists, protists, which we talked about, which was uh, the theory of that uh, protists form from colonies. Uh, Heterotrophic protists form colonies and then became animals. So, so colonial, colonial protists, protists hollow sphere of an specified cell, the beginning of specialization of these somatic body cells, then reproductive cells. So then there's infolding. And then, and then that digestive, digestive cavity, cavity which, which is, is a gastrolytic proto animal. So that's, that's how it goes. The mouth forms first for those ones. Evolutionary trend is the development of tissues. So we have skin tissue, stomach tissues, loose connective tissue, nervous tissue, blood, and uh, columnar epithelium, which you learn more about in that and physiology. Uh, more, most, most animals, animals have tissues with claw, which, which consists of one or more types of cells, like, like your skin, skin tissue is going to be like your epithelial cells, um, that are organized in a specific pattern that carry out particular tasks. Evolutionary trends, symmetry. We have radial symmetry, which means you have parts arranged around the central axis. Um, you, there's not going to be a front and back with radial symmetry, like with a squid, you can't tell what part is front and what part is back for a squid. Uh, you, just you just know that they, they have, have different areas in which they can, they can be separated. separated. Bilateral symmetry, however, which means that you are symmetrical on both sides. sides. So, so if you, you cut, cut it down, down the middle. middle. Front mm -hmm. and back that, that differ. Left and right and left have halves with the same parts. Protosomes are animals with a three-layer embryo in which the mouth is formed first. If we look back at this picture with the evolution of cells, we can see that it's like a protostome. So that is where the mouth forms first. In humans, however, our butt is gonna form first because we have like we're like durostomes and in our in our lineage. Um, so yeah, that's yeah, so how you're gonna know durostomes where the anus forms. First, protostomes with the mouth is formed first. Evolutionary trance is gut. This one was on the exam. So gastrovascular cavity is a sac-like gut. So that's going to be found in cenaridians and flatworms. So gastrovascular cavity. And it's also shown here. And it's also shown with the evolution of cells. You have that digestive cavity. That's, That's going to be your gastrovascular cavity. Sac like gut. Complete digestive tract is a tubular one. We have a whole, our intestines, it's going to be like one tract coming from our esophagus all the way down to our rectum and then our anus. So that is one long tube of your digestive system. Imagine all right, evolutionary trend. You have your body cavity. You have colon, which is the body cavity completely lined by tissue derived from mesoderm. Imagine pooping so, and like eating with the same hole. I mean, we we don't. We yeah, just have like two different, different holes. holes. Yeah, and just imagine you just poop out and then you start eating from the same place you just pooped out. I mean, that, that is disgusting. disgusting. <laughs> like when you think about it too hard, it's gross. But, but I mean, I mean like, like, it's, it's kind of crazy. crazy. You, you can, can think, think about, about it in, in like, like, the way, way what is this? Your mom, the, the way, way of, like, like reproduction and stuff, stuff like that. that. Where, where, like, like you have one hole. And then it's Bob Bates. Anyway, that's, that's different. different. <laughs> anyway, so body cavity is a body cavity completely lined by tissue derived from messenger. So you have tissue lined inside by messenger. Evolutionary trans is a circulatory system. We have a closed circulatory system, but what is an open circulatory system? Uh, a system in which circulatory fluid leaves open in the vessels and flows among tissues, which are referring to the heart. We have a closed one, 
and the blood never leaves the blood vessels in exchange uh, with cells that take place across the vesicle walls. Vessel walls. That, now yeah, we have yeah, our last slide, slide depicting our fun invertebrates. invertebrates. We have crawfish, spiders, centipedes. Nobody, Nobody got, got no spine, spine in these pictures. pictures. Your text messages that your mom's sending you, they're caught on camera. They, they are, are coming, coming through, through, but I keep, I keep like, like Xing, Xing them out. out. I don't know if you could like put, put like some kind of thing on top. We've caught when you're editing. If you edit I'm not editing. I don't have time for that. Okay. That, that is, is okay. okay. It's not it's the not end, end of the world. world. Anyways, there's an email. So that is the end. An email? Yeah, it was like at Yahoo. What? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that, that doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Literally, Literally, it's, it's fine. fine. Nobody, nobody, nobody watches cares. to the end. Nobody. Yeah, no one's gonna watch to the end anyway. anyway so, so it's at the very end. end. Wish. That's, that's what I get for having my text linked up on my computer and stuff. Oh, hello. How was work? Made it. <laughs> Hi, Daniel. <laughs> I think we're finished, actually. Yeah, we're finished with that one, but we uh, still want to do two more. Wait. We're not, not like... <laughs> we're not, like, finished with everything, though. We still have, like, two more.